Hi. Okay, so in this video, okay, I'm going to show you how to solve quadratic equation um, by factoring. Okay, and the first quadratic equation I have here is 6x squared minus 13x equal negative 5. So to, there are many ways, there are three ways to solve quadratic equation. The first one is factoring, the second one is by completing, uh, uh, taking the square root or completing the square, and the last one is to use the quadratic formula. Okay, but for this video, I want you to be solving by using, uh, the, by factoring. I want you to factor this quadratic equation, okay, to solve, to find the x-intercept. Solving means basically finding the x-intercept, okay? Um, and I'm going to go over the steps. So here are the steps for solving quadratic equation by factoring. So step one, why the quadratic equation in standard form? So I want you to start with the, um, the square, the term is the square first. The second is the term with the x, and then the constant, the number by itself, equal to zero. Basically, the right side is equal to zero, okay? Now, what is step two? So you're going to factor the left side using the method that I've shown you, which is by using the box method or by grouping. So you want to rewrite this quadratic, uh, you want to go from standard form to factor form, okay? And then don't forget to write it equal to zero. It's not anymore an expression. It's, it, uh, the quadratic is an equation, okay? Now, step three, I want us, you're going to apply the zero fold property. What do I mean? So um, basically, I want you to take each factor and then you're going to set it equal to zero. Okay, so I use P and D and here's going to be D and E. Okay, so you're going to take each factor and set it equal to zero. Why? So you can get X alone to find the x-intercept, okay? And to write the solutions, uh, the, the x-value that you found, I'm going to use two single braces like this, two curvy braces, where you're going to write the x-values. The left side is going to be the lowest x-value, and on the right side, the highest x-values, okay? So that's what you're going to do. You can take the pictures of the steps, of what, pause the video and write it out in your notebook, okay? So thank you. So let's go for the, for the steps. So step one is to write the quadratic equation in standard form. Okay. So what is a standard form? Uh, remember, you want to write it as ax squared plus bx plus c. Here you have a negative five. So in order to fix the issue, okay, what do we have to do? The right side needs to be, sorry, equal zero. The quadratic equation in standard form means uh, in this format, the right side is equal to zero. So I want this side to be equal to zero. So I have to ask myself, okay, what number do I need to add to negative five to make it into a zero? Okay. And then here you have to add five on both sides. So after adding five, okay, so the right side is equal to zero. That's what you want, right? Why negative five plus five add to zero. Now let's look on the left. Okay, alert, alert, alert. Okay, I need your attention. There's nothing you can do here. There's nothing to combine. Why? The five doesn't have an X. So we cannot combine negative 13 X with positive five. No, 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 there's no X by the five. Again, you cannot combine those two together. Why? They don't have the same variable X. Okay, the first one is X squared, the second one is X. We cannot combine them. Okay, and you cannot combine those two. Again, one has a variable of X squared, the, the other does not have one. So when there, there's no like term, what do we do? You leave everything alone. So I'm going to write everything in standard form, starting with the term with the highest exponent, uh, which is six x squared. The term with the x, which is negative 13 x. And the constant, which is plus five. Okay, step one has been done. Okay, we wrote the equation in standard form. Now, what is, uh, now the next step is step two. So step two means you're going to factor the left side. So you're going to use either the box method or by grouping. Uh, before we do the box method by grouping, you need to rewrite this equation uh, used in four terms, okay? So I need to find out the two terms I'm going to replace negative 13 x with, okay? So let's find out. So the trick is, like, I, you want to find two numbers that add to the middle term, which is negative 13 here, okay? Which is the number for B. And then you want to find two numbers, the same two number needs to be, uh, needs to multiply to um, A times C. What is A here is six, and what is C here is positive five. So eight times, the number for A times C 
is going to be 30. Okay, so now we want to find, always start with the number for A times C, the A times C number, which is 30. So always list the factor of 30, okay, but add up to negative 13. Okay, so here I know that the product is positive, but the sum is negative. It means both number, the, the number here, the factor of 30 needs, both number needs to be negative, okay? So I'm going to start, the first number that comes up is two and 15, and I'm going to make them both negative. Negative two times negative 15 is positive 30, okay? But when I add them up together, I get negative 17, okay? So I cannot use negative two and negative 15. So let me, so let me move to another, to another pair or another set. So the other number I'm picking, and what are our two numbers, over two numbers I multiply to 30. So I'm picking it by six and five, because six and five is 30, okay? So let me make both negative. Okay, so the product is positive 30, but when I add them up, it's equal to negative 11, okay? But I want negative 13, so it cannot be negative six and negative five. So can you think of a number? When you multiply um, two numbers, when you multiply them together, you get the positive 30, and when you add, you get negative, uh, sorry, negative 13, okay? So I'm thinking about the number 10 or 3n, so I'm going to make both of them negative. So the product negative three and uh, times negative 10 add up to positive 30. And when I add them up, I get negative uh, 13, check. Okay, so I found the two number to add. If I add two, negative 13, um, and multiply to positive 30, which is negative three. So it's supposed to be 10 here. Okay, negative three plus negative 10 add up to negative 30. Negative three times negative 10, uh, 10 I multiply to positive 30. So what am I going to do with that? Okay. I'm going to use this two number to replace our middle terms. So I'm going to write here six X squared, then minus three X minus 10 X. And then I'm going to bring down the five. So in class, I've shown you how to, either you can now use the box method or you can use the method by grouping, okay? Um, let me do the box method first and do the grouping after. So you're going to draw a box like this, a rectangle, whatever works. And then here on the top left corner, you always want to write the leading term. The term is just x squared. And at the bottom right, always a constant, which is five, okay? Okay, the constant is not 30, okay? The constant is five. So now you want to write here, um, it doesn't matter the order you choose. It can be negative 10x and then negative 3x here, but I'm just going to make it um, negative 10x and then negative three. I hope you can see why, because when I look vertically, okay, it's easier to do the, to identify the common factor. Okay, so now let's factor each rows first. I notice, okay, they are both, we have x here and x squared. Okay, so both numbers are divisible by x, okay? Now, there's a number that uh, uh, negative 10 and six are divisible by. Can you see that number? Okay, can it be two? No. Yeah, it should be two, right? Because two times five, yeah, correct. It cannot be five because five does not go into six evenly, okay? It cannot be six as well because six does, does not go into 10 evenly. So um, the number in by which both number are divisible by is two. So, I'm, so that's why I have two x on the left. So the row below, okay? I don't see any number where both number are divisible by, except the number, guess what, one. So I write one here. So because the number here is negative, I'm going to make the one negative. Okay, so remember the, con uh, the term with the x can never be negative. So the two x, and the number right here can never be negative. Only the numbers can be negative. So what number am I going to write on top here? The common factor, the number by both of them are divisible by, it's going to, it cannot be two, in, uh, it cannot be six, okay? So the only number that will work here is three. And I have to make sure I include the x, okay? Um, I can check my work. So two x times three x is six x squared. Negative one times three, uh, times three x is negative three x. So right here, the number 
that is both divisible by five and 10 is going to be um, negative five. Okay, so let's multiply. So two X times negative five is negative 10 X. Okay, negative one times negative five is positive five. So I'm, I found the factors, which are the, the term on the, on the edges, okay? So the factor form is three X minus five times two X minus one equal to zero. Okay, so let's go over the steps. So first we rewrote the equa quadratic equation in standard form, okay? We factor by using the uh, uh, box method, okay? So let me show you how to do by grouping. Okay, by grouping, I group the left two term together and the right two term together. So since negative 20 is negative, make sure you put the negative 10 X inside the, the parentheses. You're not done, you're, you didn't start factoring yet. So you're still adding, okay? So now we're going to pull out the common factor on the left. And here you can see it's going to be three. So here on this side is going to be three X. So I'm end up with here, two X minus one. Why? Okay, six X squared divided by three X is two X and negative three X divided by three X is negative one. And on the, on the, for the right two terms, the number, the common factor or the number that both numbers are divisible by is five. But I don't, you, the, X, the X term cannot be negative. So I'm going to pull out negative five. So I'm going to have here two X and then minus one equal to zero. So as you can see here, the factor on the left and the right matches and that's what we want when you do by grouping is mean that you're doing the work correctly. So I'm going to pull out the common factor outside. So I get two X minus one times, and then the leftover terms are positive three X and negative five. And you write here three uh, X minus five, which is the same as uh, the, the factor for the grouping method. Okay, so again, um, you factor it. So step three, you're going to apply the zero product property. What do we mean to apply the zero product property? So you're going to take each factor and set it equal to zero. So you're going to write here three X minus five equal to zero or two X minus one equal to zero. Then you're going to solve for X in each case. So the first one, you're going to add five for the first equation. Why? In order to get the X term alone. And then you divide by three so the solution is going to be X equal five third. Okay, that's the first X intercept. Okay, now let's find the second X intercept or the second solution. So you're going to add one on both sides. You get two X equal one, and then you're going to divide by two on both sides and you get X equal one half. Okay, so for the solutions, you're going to write the lowest number first, which is one half is lower compared to five third. So it's 0 0.5 and five third is about 1.66 repeating. So comma 5.3. So always go, I like to use some go to lowest to highest. And you are done. Okay, that's the final answer. Okay, so again, um, first, what did we do? You rewrote the quadratic equation in standard form. Okay. Then we factor either by grouping or by use, uh, sorry, by using the box method or by using uh, the, the grouping method. But before you need to find two numbers that add to B, which is negative 13 and multiply to A times C, which is positive 30, okay? That's where you're able to write the, um, the quadratic equation in using, using four terms instead of three. So it's easier to factor. Then we have the factor form. We took each factor and set it equal to zero and you solve for X. And when you're done, you use two single braces and you use X value, the lowest X value comma the high, highest um, X value. Okay, so thank you for watching my video. I hope this video um, was helpful to you. Bye.